When bear encounters do occur, one response has been effective in significantly reducing the number of bear attacks with severe outcomes. The use of bear spray. Many can testify to the effectiveness of bear spray as a bear deterrent. From bear specialists to outfitters, guides and hunters. But what exactly is bear spray and what makes for a good choice? Be certain you're purchasing bear spray, not personal defense or law enforcement spray. Bear spray is clearly identified on the label. All bear sprays are required by the Environmental Protection Agency to show at least one of the following. Bear deterrent. To deter bears from attacking humans. The label will clearly identify the proper ingredients such as capsaicin and related capsaicinoids derived from oleoresin of capsicum. The active ingredient content should fall between 1 and 2 percent. All bear spray must be registered with the Environmental Protection Agency and the label will clearly show the following. EPA registration number, EPA establishment number, and state where manufactured. Canister minimum size requirements are 225 grams or 7.9 ounces of net weight. Read the label thoroughly for the following. Detailed precautions. Directions for use and storage and disposal instructions listed on the canister. When purchasing bear spray, take into consideration the following. You may have more than one encounter with a bear. You may have more than one bear charging you simultaneously. You will need sufficient spray for the hike out. Small, personal sized canisters may be effective against humans, but are not effective against bears and they often emit a stream of liquid difficult to aim. If you come across a store selling an unregistered product as bear spray, please help by notifying the Environmental Protection Agency. A good bear spray will have a safety clip on the trigger. This prevents accidental discharge. Never carry bear spray in your pack. The time it takes to remove it, the difference between being charged by a bear and being mauled by one. Two basic holsters allow for quick and easy access to the spray. The hip holster and the chest strap holster. It is recommended that each person should have their own canister, both for their own protection and to back up others. Under no circumstances should you use the spray as an insecticide. Do not spray a tent or equipment. Never spray a person or clothing. The spray will not repel a bear from later curiosity or aggression. Bear spray is only effective when the aerosol mist is directly inhaled or sprayed into the bear's face. In terms of human health and safety, there are a few things to remember. Asthmatics should avoid inhaling the spray. Contact lenses may be permanently damaged by exposure. If skin or eyes come into contact with the spray, flush with plenty of water. If you inhale the spray, move to an area of fresh air. The effects of the spray will wear off after about an hour. Bear spray should be transported in the trunk or back of the vehicle in a sealed bag or canister. Avoid handling in the car. Avoid storing in direct sunlight or in temperatures above 120 degrees. Avoid risk of puncturing the canister. Certain weather and habitat conditions may affect the use of bear spray. With wind, there are two concerns, speed and direction. A strong side wind will blow the mist of spray to the side. A strong headwind will blow the spray back at you. Even a mild headwind may eventually expose you to spray if you do not leave the area. Extreme heat or cold may reduce effectiveness. Be extra alert in limited sight areas. Bear spray is non-lethal to bears and causes them to experience the following. Eye irritation, choking, coughing, nausea, reduced breathing, and inflammation of the skin, all distracting a bear from its charge. If you are new to bear spray, practice spraying a couple of times. 
Also, it is recommended to test fire each new canister to make sure it works properly. Always test outside with any wind at your back. First, flip off the safety clip. Make sure the nozzle is aimed away from you. Press the trigger with a short test burst. If you surprise a bear at close range, especially a grizzly bear, and especially a bear with cubs, know that they'll usually leave, but be prepared to spray. There are many times when using bear spray is not appropriate. If a bear is in the distance, do not approach or attempt to spray them. If a bear is nearby but not being aggressive or coming towards you, be prepared to spray, but try to leave the area first. If you spot or suspect a bear in the area, don't spray, but be prepared by removing the can from your holster and removing the safety clip. When spraying a charging bear, especially shooting from the holster, you may not have time to aim. Try to spray early enough so the bear, if charging, runs into the widest bear spray cloud. If a bear begins to charge, spray when the bear is within 30 to 40 feet. Remember, a bear can run up to 35 miles per hour. When spraying a bear, aim for the face but slightly downward, for the spray will billow upwards a bit. Give a second shot if the first shot doesn't immediately stop the bear's charge. If the bear continues to charge, empty the can. Leave the area immediately after shooting the spray. Bear spray is recommended by professionals for prevention and defense against bear attacks. The cone of the spray allows for less precise aim. A bullet that only wounds a bear produces a dangerous bear. Just as important, bear spray is non-lethal. It may save you and the bear. When you're in bear country, the best defense is to follow basic safety techniques. Bear spray is no substitute for planning. It won't prevent encounters. Bear spray is meant as a last course of action. It is no replacement for common sense. Every bear is different, and each encounter is also unique. Visit your local wildlife agency to learn more about bears before entering bear country. Encountering an aggressive bear is rare, but to do it five times and survive makes Chuck Barabaugh an authority on bear pepper spray. When buying bear pepper spray, you want to make sure you're buying actually bear spray, not personal defense spray. Bear spray always has the word bear in the label. It also clearly shows the proper ingredients of capsaicin and related capsinoid and the spray duration and the distance of the spray so you can make an informed consumer purchase. Carrying bear pepper spray while out hiking or hunting in bear country is wise, but avoidance is still the best prevention to a bear encounter. Learn to recognize bear sign and always be aware of your surroundings. If you do happen to encounter a bear and it is not aware of you, quietly exit the area. If the bear is aware of you, use a firm voice bear. along with a non-threatening gesture while slowly backing away keeping your attention on the bear. In the unlikely event the bear charges, you want to get your spray out and give a warning blast towards the bear with a slight left to right movement. And if the bear doesn't defer its charge, then you're ready to do a second or third spraying. The other scenario is if the bear is like, boom, it's coming towards you, you want to aim directly at it and try to keep aimed at it and continue spraying until it diverts its charge. It's been shown that bear pepper spray is more effective than a gun, but it needs to be accessible and it's recommended to carry two. Winston Greeley, out among Montana's fish, wildlife, and parks.